Tredavious White played us really tough the year before. He played us really good. So, um, you know, he had me pissed off all year. Uh, so I had to make sure I left left a lasting impression on him. And I felt like I did that um, in a good competitive way. The following is a presentation of Uninterrupted Canada. Welcome to the Benny and Bo Show with your hosts, Ben Hebert and Bo Levi Mitchell. All right, let's go. Episode 10 of the Benny and Bo Show brought to you by DraftKings. We have an amazing guest today. We have got your team himself, Mapletron, number 11, Chase Claypool. Got a lot going on. Lots going on today, but a couple shout outs before we get rolling into some convo here. Friend of the show, Max Homa picked up a PGA title yesterday, so we're going to throw him a little bit of love. He came on the pod early for us. Picked up 1.3 million yesterday. Some shekels. In Napa down there. Shot a 65 the final round. Went 65 Saturday, 65 Sunday. Congratulations, Max. If you don't know what to do with that 1.3, we could find something to do for it. Way to go, buddy. Good on you, Max. Thanks for finally replying on Instagram, by the way. That's right. And you know, another quick shout out I want to throw, because I know we talked about it about a month ago now. The Toronto Blue Jays are steaming Willie Beeman right now, and it is a beautiful thing to watch for me. Not if you're an Astros fan. I, I'm not going <laughs> to pretend like I, you know, I'm super MLB dialed to every Jays game. They play 160, however many games they play. But in 2015, when they were, I think it was 15 and 16, when they had Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion, uh, Josh Donaldson, and they were rolling, it's just funny in Canada. Like, when, when the Raptors are doing good, They're Canada's team. They're not Toronto's team. When the Jays are doing good, they're not Toronto's team. They're Canada's team. So I am jacked up. If the Jays make the playoffs, hey, I was even rolling down here in Calgary the other day. Blue Jays hats everywhere. I'm like, here we go. It's it's starting already. I have noticed. I've seen them a lot more. And they're fun, man. Like, Vlad, I saw after the game yesterday, I think it was, they were playing Josh Donaldson. He was in town. Donaldson and Vlad were signing each other's jerseys. And then I saw after the game, the Donaldson said he should be the MVP of the league. Over Otani, who we were talking about was probably going to win the MVP. Yeah, I mean that that is hard. I, I saw him say that, and I I don't disagree with him. You well, know his number I mean? his numbers are ridiculous. They are, and he, they got a Cy Young. young. They, it's just so hard to like go against the guy that's like setting a new precedent, like what we talked about earlier, and I think that was episode one or two. They have a Cy Young uh, candidate, and they have a guy up for the MVP. They're 19 games over 500. Like, how good is Boston and New York and the the Rays that you're 19 games over 500 and you're still in the bubble for the wild card? But shout out to the Jays. Make the playoffs. Let's get the Canada buzzing again because when they're rolling that sky dome, it is it is a good thing to watch. Oh man, being a baseball fan, even though they're not my team, I do still love seeing it. Um, one thing I would love to talk about: uh, Canadian born, but also rep in Canada. Layla Fernandez uh, does an amazing job here. We we were talking tennis, we were talking Milos Roundish, right? Montreal training base. Um, how is you know tennis Canada? upcoming now and we were talking a lot of the about a lot of the gentlemen yeah because we were well when we talked about bianca how she won the u.s and then genie was rolling through and you saw the chapel was doing great yeah we asked you know what does it take to keep building that and this is what it takes it takes uh, uh two two amazing women um you know layla on the on this on the canadians i almost said cfl side <laughs> on the canadian side um and then Emma, Emma, who actually wins it, but you she know what? was she was born in Canada. We should claim but her. She's not repping. Yeah, you no, would. She's not. She's <laughs> you would. You would claim her that's, just because she's born here. That's how it works when you win. Everyone wants to claim you. Um, yeah, she won. She's born in Canada. I think she represents Great Britain now. But two superstars that that kind of upset everyone. Big upsets along the way. Great story. And tennis is such a. I find tennis to be like the most predictable sport ever. When yeah, you, but I, I feel like you in the beginning of Donation Station, you were betting a lot on tennis, and it wasn't going your way. It was like you were kind of like the curse. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess recently it hasn't been that it hasn't been that predictable. But if you go back over the last ten years, yeah, exactly, top three, four seeds every single week winning, and, you know, you can and, that, and that's what we it. talked about, right? Like almost like the changing of the guard. And it wasn't like they were ranked twentieth and thirtieth. Yeah, they were ranked outside. I think the top one hundred, and for both of them to roll roll through each side of the bracket at the same time. Wicked. And, but what here's what really caught my eye. Uh, even though she got second place, getting the watch for speech, you know, being from America, knowing exactly where I was on 9-11. They're playing in New York, and she says in her speech, you know, New York has been so resilient for the last 20 years. I, I hope that we can all be that resilient. And, and, and it blew up on the internet, right? Yeah, Everybody was, went crazy about it. It was an amazing. To have the wherewithal to, first of all, get to that spot, lose, and think about someone other than yourself. And everybody went crazy. And what it got me thinking about was that 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 quote right there, and like her speech will live in infamy for so long. So it it got me thinking about other sports quotes that kind of got you. 
So I, I would like to know what you think as far as any other sports quotes that really stick with you, uh, as maybe as you were growing up or, or even just watching. Yeah, I know it's, it's actually funny you bring that up. I actually thought her quote at the end of it gave her just as much love as it did her actually getting to the final. So that was special. Well, you can tell the, the difference for me is that you can tell the passion from it. It was authentic. Ex- exactly. Oh, it's, yeah. it's authentic. Yeah, it is. Like uh, you've been in, you know, before Grey Cups and stuff, like I know I can speak for Briar Finals or big games. Like you can't turn it off. You can pretend like you turn it off if you don't think about it. But like where your mind goes, you think of your victory speech or what you're going to say if you win. You never really think about what you're going to say. I never think about what I'm going to say if I lose. But I've always had like, what am I, even lately, like, what should I post on Instagram if we win this one? It'd be funny. Like, something like that. So for, her to, so, for, so, so for her to go to there, if that's where she went the night before to think about that, unbelievable. But back to what you asked me, <laughs> getting a bit off track. I got excited about that. <laughs> sport quotes for me, I mean, there, I mean, there's so many good, like, funny ones and clips that, like, I would think of. If you think of sport clips, like, if I, if I asked my regular buddies, they would say, playoffs. You know, Jim Mora. Jim Mora. You know, uh, Indianapolis Colts. That was pretty good. He's ripping his team. Oh, yeah. Allen Iverson, who is is on our wall here, he's talking about practice. Practice. See that? Yeah. To me, those, those, are, those, two are, that, those are two that no matter what, at any age, you're going to remember those because people play them over and over and over. But were, were there any like those motivational ones that got you? Yeah, motivational stuff. I mean, I would say stuff that people kind of always make fun of on the internet, but I always respect it just because of how dialed he is and his routine. He never falls off, whether it's character or not. Bill Belichick, when yeah. he speaks, is powerful because he, he gives you ex- maybe not the truth, but exactly how he's feeling. Like, I truly believe when he speaks, he means that stuff. And another guy, I don't know if you saw Tom Brady's speech he gave to his his newest teammates in Tampa Bay when they won their, yeah. when he won his seventh ring. He was up on stage just looking so good, just GQ'd up, Tom Brady. <laughs> and he, he named... He named a little man crush there. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> he he named every single guy on his team and how much they meant to him and what they did for the team and the coaches and the staff. And he talked about families and legacies. And I was like, I got goosebumps right now. But like I was like watching it going, like, that is a leader. That's how you speak. And that's why guys go to there to play. And he even said, I never got to choose to be drafted by New England. I chose to come here to play with these guys. And here's why I did it. That was an unbelievable speech. If you haven't seen it, hop on the YouTube wagon and check out Tom Brady's championship ring speech he gave to his teammates. It was uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I know you've got in, in, in your. Uh, I'll give you a little shout out in your basin. You've got three or four big photos in there. I know Tom Brady's one. I know MJ's one. I think Gretzky. Who's your other one? Tiger Woods Tiger and Woods. Roger Federer. Yeah. So my mine does come from that uh, MJ, and just because I think this is like one of the most iconic as far as speaking of failure. You know, it's uh, I've missed more than I'm going to read it off because I want to make sure I hit it correctly because that's what you should do when you quote something. Uh, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been entrusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. To me, like when you're when you're talking to kids and um, you know everybody talks about MJ for the rings and everything he did. Six, you know, six and zero in the NBA championship. Uh, th- th- that's what I respect the most. That's a crazy stat. Yeah, I mean, it, it, because everybody's like, oh, think about, you know, like you, you watch LeBron, you watch Kobe miss a game when he shot. You know, if you go ask Michael right away, he's going to be like, dude, I missed that shot so many times. Oh, yeah. And I, I think about it all the time. The amount of times I didn't have a game when he drive. The amount of times, um, you know, you have that one pass, wide open guy and miss it. Um, you know, just having those opportunities to fail and, and learning from those every single time is is ultimately why any athlete succeeds when you when you, i remember when i could lose when i was young i'm still not a good loser i'm a terrible loser but when you lose when you're young it's like end of the world you know i i wouldn't say i i didn't learn when i was young about losing i would agree with that like you know you like just, when they say a, there's winning and there's learning yeah yeah when you're young that's, like that's you win, bullshit you, when you're young yeah when you're young it's like you lose and you're like oh i don't understand why and you point fingers and it's yeah like, you're angry as you grow up you're like man this is why. i know why we lost yeah, if i can learn from it and you fix it yeah yeah, totally. So, and speaking of that, you know, we got to dive into the CFL. Yeah. Okay, oh, we yeah. got to dive into the CFL. I'm in Saskatchewan. Heard about you being up on the big screen. Oh, I was in the big screen at that Mosaic Stadium. I'm in Saskatchewan. I'm with my brother, my four cousins. We're sipping on some 40 Creek. If you haven't tried their latest from Fox Heart, check it out. Canadian, these guys are going to be winning awards. I got my family hooked on it this weekend. We went into the uh, liquor board in Saski, Ooh. picked up a couple for them. They're loving it. These guys are unbelievable. Check them out. Please drink responsibly like I did at the Ryder game, ladies and gentlemen. And that place, by the way. I bet it was sounding like that ah, the entire just... night with you guys. Because I've only met two or three from your family. but uh, Good people. Great one, people. We had a great one night. One thing is you can all throw it back. 
<laughs> we had a great night. I'll tell you what, that stadium from, from going to watch you play in Calgary and mm-hmm. I don't live in Regina anymore. And it's just like growing up, I was driving past it on the Friday night prior and it was lit up. It looks like an NFL Mosaic stadium. stadium? Yep. Oh, man, it looks yeah. like an NFL stadium planted in the middle of Regina. Yeah. And hey, nothing against Regina. I love Regina. It's just not the most beautiful place in the world. But that stadium, no. I, I was saying, <laughs> come on, it's my hometown. I mean, I did. I posted a, I posted a, a when I, I wasn't playing in Winnipeg, and I posted a, a video of the inside of the stadium. because I, I do. I love that stadium. Um, I believe it's the same creator as the Seattle Seahawks stadium. So it was, it's that one I wrote like a top nine stadium, definitely in the CFL, you know, just, just as a joke. <laughs> I saw that. Actually. And people ask like, all right, what do you really think it is? I was like, well, it's, it's one and two with, yeah. with Sask. I mean, when, to me, driving on the bus, right? You get your headphones in, you got your stamps gear on, you're driving up to the stadium. And when you look at those stadiums, you pull up and your thought is like, all right, it's game time. Like, Go time, with, baby. This is going to be an environment. You know what I mean? And I think that's something, uh, you know, some stadiums might lack, but those two, Definitely have that. I think there'd be people in Regina that would never go to a football. Like I remember when when they built the stadium, people in Regina were all up in arms that they were ripping down Taylor Field because it was like yeah, you it's know, just pride the and joy. The history, right? That place was a shithole. <laughs> oh man, I loved it, dude. I was season ticket holder there for ten years. Complete dump, picking slivers out of your butt, and the wood seats, gross. Right? Like this new stadium, I think there'd be people to go to the games to experience the stadium, just check it out, even if they don't like football. And that's and that's the whole point of it, right? Like you want to build stadiums that that draw to the eyes and say, like, man, I just I want to be there. Whether it's a, a concert, whether it's a football game, hockey, you know what I mean? Like whatever it is, when you drive by a stadium, the thought should be like, I have to go there. It was sick. And I and I got put my ugly mug, I was put up on the big screen. I was doing a promo for Curling Canada to uh, get some people there to come up to Saskatoon in November to watch us at the Olympic trials. All my old football hockey buddies are just grilling me like, oh, God, you're getting uglier. And they are chirping me on text. But it was good. Unfortunately, well, or fortunately, however you want to put it, I only got to see like the first half of your game. And then I went to the Ryder game. And I was doing my thing. Didn't go your way. First half wasn't that much more exciting than the second half. Yeah, didn't, didn't go your way. And uh, we have a mailbag question here. Not going to read who it's from because he's kind of being a little bit of a dick. But he, uh, he, the point, the point was, he wanted to know with you winning so much, and and you know you're kind of in uncharted territory here. Not just you, yeah, no, no, the Stamps, sure. Dave, Huff. You know, basically, how how are you doing, and what are you doing to try to get out of this? I'm, I'm doing good mentally. I think uh, I think the hardest thing is for the entire team is we're very young. Do you know what I mean? We have the coaches made a conscious decision to get younger and and our staff to to get younger because it, we felt like when we were getting to playoffs we didn't have the legs that other teams had now they decided to keep around a few veterans myself jamar wall you know you can williams you know all three of us um we lose jay wall on, on play two of game one you know you lose myself to a broken leg and then you know you can was fighting stuff pretty tough to end of the year so so a lot of the veterans you you decide to keep around um, aren't there to be that veteran presence that you need. So the team was, to me, a little bit misguided and young, just playing for a couple of games, right? Which we all we all knew and understood. I told you in the offseason, I was like, we're gonna be young. We're gonna struggle. We're gonna struggle in the beginning. I was like, and then we'll figure it out. But we're gonna struggle in the beginning. The more veteran teams will kind of get off to a hotter start. I was like, but then we'll figure it out. Um, we haven't. And to me, the coaches deciding to keep me around as one of those veteran presence on offense, I take that upon myself because for a vast majority of the years from 2012, you know, my first start in or my first year of starting in 2014 to 20, you know, 18, 19, there was a lot of success happening. Oh yeah. And I'm getting a lot of the praise for that success, you know, being in, being in a team sport. So if I'm going to be willing to accept the praise for the success of an entire team, I've got to be willing to accept the heat. Yeah. Um, I've got to be able to look at myself and say, Hey, you know what? I have to play better. I'm the highest paid player in the team. One of the highest paid players in the league. Um, and do coaches want you thinking like, oh, you don't think about money? No, they don't want you thinking about money and how you make. But to me, you're looking your teammates in the eyes. You're not there in the beginning. You, you, you know, a kind of fluke injury or whatever, but you're still not there grinding it out through these losses, trying to figure it out with your team. And I think that was one thing for me that kind of has set in is like, I want to be there through thick, through thin, whatever it is for these guys, because that was my chosen role and decided role from the teammates and the coaches. Um, we haven't been there yet. We will find our way out. We have the best coaching staff in the league. We've got the best, you know, upstairs in the league. Um, Huff's mind works differently than everybody else's as far as the guys he brings in. So there is a uh, there's an end goal here. Method. There's, to a, his yeah, there's a method. Yeah, he, he's a 
he's been there with some of the greatest coaches out there, man. So uh, to me, there's definitely an end goal. Something will change. Um, has it changed as fast as we'd all like? No. And yeah. uh, has my play been up to par? No, it hasn't. I, I've got two touchdowns and seven interceptions this year. So um, I would like to obviously be playing better. Uh, but, you know, coaches got to make decisions to see what's best for the team for the rest of this year to make sure that we are growing and uh, we are getting better. Well, that was deep. And uh, I was real deep. But oh, was, that that was good. You, is that not what you wanted? Exactly what I wanted. No, that was great. That's that's probably what this guy wanted to hear that sent us that note, actually. But uh, I just left out the swear words and the angry stuff he was sending in there. Dude, so. I, I got so many, uh, you know, just angry messages after the game. And, and one of my favorite things to do when someone sent me that is, you're, you're, you're pathetic, you know, blah, 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 I can't believe this. I just write, I hope you have a better day. Oh, and you the, reply to him? Only the ones that go like crazy, that's right? Really the ones impressive. that send you like textbooks of messages. And they're just like, I, I, you know, oh, I can't believe you. I can't believe the way you play. You're so overrated. And I just always write back, I hope, I hope you have a, I hope your day gets better. And like the amount of times somebody replies like, dude, I'm so sorry. I was hot headed and I just, I wasn't in the right headspace when I sent you that message. I don't mean to be like that. Well, you know, that what, stuff kills me. That's funny. But you know, the funny thing, like pro, we talk about pro sports. I don't, I don't care. If it's curling, CFL, NFL, baseball. You don't play up to absolute par, like as good as you possibly can. The guys on the other side of the field are getting paid. They're professional athletes. Oh yeah, for you sure. You know, like it's not it's not easy. Yeah, and I just think it's once once you set a precedent of, of the way you play, we, as soon as it's anything below that, you're gonna get questioned, you're gonna get knocked off the pedestal. Um, you know, Mia Ham said it's not it's not hard to get to the top, it's hard to stay at the top. We talked about that with Mark McMorris, Penny Alexiak, them winning young, and it's like every time I finish second or third or we don't win from when I was yeah. nineteen to thirty, I'm a chump. Yeah, you know, but that's 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 an awesome part of sports, right? It like it's awesome to be held to that standard. And if you don't hold yourself to that standard, then what what are you even doing it for? I love it. I love it. Well, that's good. I uh, I hope you guys get back on track. I know the, the we got bye week this week. Uh, we got a bye week this week. Definitely uh, some some film film review, some questions uh, to be answered. Uh, but and I'm making you watch that documentary. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get jacked up. It's gonna be good. We're getting jacked up. <laughs> okay, one more thing we got to hit on before we get into the uh, the NFL action all the time. Ryder Cup is coming. We haven't got the golf lately, which is actually depressing because I always, you always make me feel nice about myself on the golf course. You've been playing ball. I've been kind of getting ready for my season. I quit golf after Club Champs because I was so terrible. But the Ryder Cup is here, whistling straights, and there's a whole bunch of drama going on with the U.S. team versus Europe. So, obviously, did you see uh, Brooks was in, what was it, the Golf Digest he did like oh yeah uh, yeah I, yeah I do I do know what you're talking about and uh, I I want to know your thoughts on that like Bruce comes out he talks down on the Ryder Cup the style of the event being in there with other guys that he's used to compete yeah he with. said it's a it's a it's a solo sport that we play solo we're we're on our own you know uh, regimen time all all day every day they work out they eat they nap and then you go to the Ryder Cup and it's full on yeah. and their team stuff and they're out of rhythm and like everyone hates Patrick Creed Brooks and Bryson hate each other. <laughs> DJ just like, well, I don't know what he's doing. Like, and the Euro Europeans are just sitting there probably just like giggling, like these guys just can't get it together. And then it went public. Yeah. And then it's in the social media. Do you know what I imagine up. happening like when they come into the locker room all together is everybody's sitting there waiting and then Brooks and Bryson both walk in <laughs> and they kind of stare at each other and Patrick Reed kind of like, you know, looks around. He's like, how about these guys, huh? And everybody's like, Pat, stop. We also hate you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but it's weird. I feel like, I feel like there's just the motivation for the US team for whatever reason's not there. Like I have this written down. It's like, if there was fifty million dollars on the line, they would all do it, no matter what, and wouldn't say a thing about it. Do the, do the Americans then go out and get yeah. behind each other and they're clapping and hugging and doing the chants like Europe, and they try to win it, or is it because there's no money that the Europeans kind of have more pride than the Americans, which is crazy because the Americans are the most pride out of anyone of country in, ever, in the whole world? No. Uh, yeah, I think it's definitely pretty prideful when it comes to the USA side. Like I think uh, every one of us we're all competing within the same uh, nation together. Right. And they're all looking at each other like, well, um, I want the most sponsorship dollars. I want to be the one that carries the team. I want to be seen as the number one player in the world. I want to hold the number one player uh, in the world rankings as, as long as I can. And they see those competitors against each other. Right. Yeah. Whereas I think you were talking about yeah, it. Team you Europe, me, yeah. they're all from different countries. They're not competing for the same bag and the same fame. They all kind of want to win together. They all got different flags, right? Yeah. Like we have my different state flags. That's a lot different. Like to me, it's, they all represent USA. And now you're going to go to the European side where they're all coming together like, hey, guys, let's get this done. Like, yeah. Let's do and it. Well, and let's you're, be America. And if you look at the world rankings of the Europeans and the American teams, it's not even close. Yeah. It, should, it should be a landslide. We will get into that in Donation Station. But just never forget this, no matter what. Every country, all the time, no matter what, always wants to beat the United States. Yeah, it's understandable. Simple as that. So now we talked about the NFL. We got a big week. I got my Steelers jersey on. 
We got to talk. It was unbelievable. Chase Claypool from the Pittsburgh Steelers was in the house just before they played the Raiders. We caught him right after the Buffalo game. He was unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Chase Claypool. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me on. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, we got to start because it's hot. It's right out of the gates. Game one, big dub for the Steelers. You roll into town, a lot of pressure on you. Second year, you killed it last year. And in the first game of the year, you go full Randy Moss over Tredavious White. And then you get shout out Monday Night Football from Randy Moss and you got Moss. Talk to us about that catch, the monster flex after and the big dub in, in Buffalo. Yeah, no, that was a good one to have because um, Tredavious White played us really tough the year before. He played us really good. So, um, you know, he had me pissed off all year. Uh, so I had to make sure I left left a lasting impression on him. And I felt like I did that um, <laughs> in a good competitive way. But uh, it was fun playing playing him again and then again a dub, a little redemption game going. Yeah, see, uh, us in the football locker room, I know uh, you're probably saying something else a little less proper um, in the in the uh, the locker room of the boys. So I will ask you, if you don't mind, uh, Jadavious White might be up there, but I'll let you decide. Uh, us on the outside, you know, we all we all listen to announcers and who they say are, you know, top three DBs. This is the best corner. This is the best DB. Uh, I'd like to hear from the, the man uh, himself. Who do you think are top three DBs or maybe the top three you face, uh, word, however you want? Yeah, um, I like um, the couple DBs I've played that are really good. Obviously, Tredavious White. Um, Marlon Humphreys is really good. Um, Andre Roby, is that his name? Andre Roby? Roby? Uh, Roby? From uh, Texans? Yeah. The yeah. nickel corner? Uh, that's your boys. Roby. Yes. It, I am a Texans fan, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Some, we'll, we'll some, some Roby. of Roby last year played <laughs> me well. Um, and then Malcolm Butler played me well, too, but. I think obviously Jalen Ramsey's up there and Stephon Gilmore. I like okay. those. Well, those are the big boys. Those are the same guys. I like we, that. Those are the same guys we talk about. So, yeah. so you go into Buffalo first as a rookie. You play your first season with no fans. You go into Buffalo, kind of a crazy atmosphere. Obviously, the fans there are nuts, jumping off tables. I saw after the game, Big Ben did an interview, talked about how big the win was, and for guys like yourself, even in your second year, finally going into that uh, stadium packed like that was that kind of the dream you were thinking of the NFL was going to be when you originally got there yeah no I think um I think walking out into that through that tunnel um especially when you're walking alongside the Bills players because our locker room and their locker room is right beside each other so we kind of go out the same tunnel so it's cool like running out the tunnel and hearing all these boos um when we run out and then you know and it's a hostile environment you know people are talking shit I don't know if I can swear about <laughs> yeah, that. You can, yeah, you you can, can say whatever you want, bro. All right, man. Uh, people are just like calling you like TikTok boy. That shit fires me <laughs> up. Um, and, then, um, and then the crowd goes wild when the other team uh, runs out of the stadium. So I think it's a super cool environment. And uh, I, was, I was hyped to play in it. And I think it makes us play better because we're kind of against, you know, all odds. Man, that's almost like the, the soccer field. Like soccer, they all walk out the same side, same time, and everything. Um, hey, so I do want to ask you because I've all, I, I'm a quarterback myself, so I've always thought this about Big Ben because typically when I have a, a younger receiver come in, step into the game, maybe there's an injury or something, you know, week to week, um, you're worried about that guy doing the thing, doing things right. One one thing I've always noticed about watching Ben and the Steelers when it was A B, whether it was A B, Martavis Bryant, uh, Juju when he first came in, Deontay Johnson, yourself. He attacks you guys. Like, he throws y'all the ball a lot. Now, to me, that's a lot of trust to, be, to put in a young receiver. But uh, I, I just got to know, like, how does that feel to know, like, I've got a, I've got a QB that's at 38 that's trusting a 22-year-old uh, at, at every critical situation of the game? Yeah, no, I think it's super reassuring, um, especially some of the third down plays, like that last third down play he threw. That was good to get that ball because we had run, ran that play earlier and I was open, but he had gotten pressured. Uh, so he wasn't able to throw it. And he told me he was going to come back to it. Uh, so when he did come back to it, it was nice to know that he trusts me to make that play. Um, it builds your confidence quicker. and You don't oh, have yeah. to worry too much as the game goes on. Yeah, man. So uh, I dreamed of playing in the NFL. Obviously, I, I came from Texas. I grew up in Houston, Texas. I dreamed of playing out there. Uh, you came from BC. So uh, what I've heard in the great, from the grapevine is that you're a huge G. Roy Simon fan. Um, yeah, you even maybe yeah, thought that was like my guy that I watched. Yeah, so you maybe even thought about the CFL. You were thinking about going to Simon Fraser. You put your video up on Facebook. Um, you know the numbers start. Uh, so the phone starts ringing. You get down to Notre Dame. Just talk to us a little bit about that process. 
Yeah. So like you said, in grade 10, my 10th grade, uh, I think after the season, um, SFU, a D2 school in Canada, the only D2 school, I think in Canada, but at least in my area, um, reached out to me and they said, Hey, can you put like a little cut up from your last season? So I put that cut up together and I think, um, and then, uh, they're like, okay, hey, we love what you have on film. Uh, we're super interested. We want you to come to some camps. Um, in my junior season, like, can you put that same little three game cut up on? So I did that, put that cut up up and I got the, the views blew up. And then I put that on huddle first and then I promoted it on Facebook. And then when I put it on Facebook, a coach, my brother's former coach saw it and was like, this film's too good. I can get you off in two weeks. But the only thing you can't do is play summer AAU ball, which was like a big thing for me. I wanted to do that because that's where you get all your offers, junior year, um, basketball AAU, going to Seattle and traveling, Vegas yeah. and stuff. So that was a decision I had to make. I had to choose football or basketball, and I was leaning basketball. But I just thought I'd take a leap of faith. You know, football has always been by my side. So did the football thing, uh, got <laughs> made, an offer two weeks right later decision. from Nevada. And everything worked out. It was a lot of fun. You said you got an offer from Nevada? That was my first offer from Coach Pullian. And then he came over to Notre Dame. Wow, that's awesome. So, Chase, I just got to ask you about, about that tape. You played uh, U.S. ball in B.C. or did you play CFL rules in B.C.? Yeah, so I played in high school. I think we were the only province in Canada that played NFL rules. But growing up, I started playing football when I was eight. It was CFL rules. So three downs. Um, we had, if we kicked it out the back of the end zone, it's a point. We actually won a championship game on that. <laughs> um, I see. You. Wider fields, longer fields. The fields are like 130 yards with the end zones. So I grew up playing that up until high school. And then I transitioned to NFL rules, which, w- which helped me get recruited because it eliminated all the question marks with the rule changes. Totally. And I got a question for you. What would you do with him running routes on a CFL field? Uh, you'd have more targets than Darren Waller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be that would be fun. Oh, that would be too easy. So I got to talk to you about, you got a big documentary coming out. You, Chuba Hubbard, Javon Hall in there uh, with Uninterrupted Canada, talking about the journey from Canada to the U.S., uh, making, making paths for Canadian athletes to go down there. Why don't you talk a little bit about that and how important that is to you guys? Yeah, I think it's super cool. Uh, this documentary, it's a super cool opportunity to kind of shed a light on what we did growing up and how we got to where we were at. Because we all took different paths, whether it was, um, you know, growing up all throughout um, your, you know, your childhood life in Canada or moving when you're like 12 or your path to the draft was a little different. Mine was unaffected by COVID. Um, theirs was kind of affected by COVID. Um, you know, we had injuries along the way. So I think it's a super cool opportunity to see what it's like for Canadians who don't have the same opportunity as Americans with, you know, underfunded programs and not a lot of exposure to see how we got to the NFL, what we did differently, what we did similar. We've got to see a couple snippets of it behind the scenes, doing some work with Uninterrupted Man. It looks unbelievable. I can't wait. It comes out uh, October the 8th. So make sure to check out the documentary, Northern Ties featuring Chase Claypool. Yeah, it's going to be sick. Chase, whenever you want to invite us over to that house, uh, we will gladly accept. <laughs> yeah, we might be throwing a rager when it drops. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Hey, uh, obviously football is a huge passion of yours, but something uh, I follow you on Instagram. Uh, you can see the graphic tee I've got going. I've noticed you're a big graphic tee guy, but fashion is something that you've got uh, definitely going on in your life. You've got the, uh, the Mapletron, the Chase Claypool brand going. You've got another brand coming out, I believe. Um, yeah. I just wonder, man, like, is there an OVO, Drake, collab happening? I know you're a Jordan athlete, so uh, just talk to us maybe about uh, how that became a big part of your life. Yeah, so last year, I think it was like my first game of the season, I wore like some like an outfit that you would wear to like, I don't know, like just a lazy Sunday or something, (laughs) something you wouldn't wear out. So I wore that because I didn't really care in the stadium. And I took a picture, posted it. And my friend who's, um, you know, pretty high in the fashion industry was like, yo, you cannot be doing that. You have a lot of eyeballs on you. If you have a big game, people are going to be roasting (laughs) on your outfit. I was like, all right. So I hired him. He's now my um, stylist. So now he's getting outfits for me. And we ordered all these clothes and I'm tagging all these people. And I'm like, why don't I just make clothes 
and I can tag my own company and and market myself yes, and sir. wear my stuff and everyone sees what I'm wearing, they see the fit that I'm wearing, they like it. And and if one percent of people buy it, then awesome. It's super cool to see people wearing your merch. So um that's what I did in this off season is I started this more high like quality streetwear uh company and it kind of plays off my number it's a little bit french theme i can't really talk about too much um without giving it away but um it's stuff that i want to wear during the season that i can tag and be comfortable wearing and then i can market myself rather than all these big name companies and then i'm doing the same with mapletron i got a nice world tour mapletron shirt coming drop in this game day actually yeah so. well hey, that's i promise cool. i'll be a consumer and i know a lot of people here in canada will be as well yeah that uh yeah you get some of that stuff up here we like to talk i mean i'm running my steeler jersey today and support you but we got to get some of that gear up here on the set we uh no doubt. No i saw doubt. i saw one of your youtube videos i know you're big on social media like you're saying you know being the tiktok boy you get yelled at the youtube all your action <laughs> on insta but uh you, uh, I saw something on your YouTube about you said, I sold a couple uh, hoodies today. I got to get this stuff shipped out. Do you literally go pack that stuff, ship it, send it to all your stuff, or is that just for the YouTube vid? Um, so I do, like, giveaways. So I have right to my right, there's, like, um, a pile of hoodies. So I'll do, like, I'll send them to some people, um, like, gift in. So I'll do that. Uh, my company will send me, like, big box of stuff and give them to some teammates. I can ship them out to some people shipping up ship them out to some family so i do like kind of the more personalized shipping uh but when it comes to like consumer orders in season i wouldn't have too much time to do that so i have a company that takes care of that for me um but there's gonna be a couple pieces this year that are super personalized that i just want to like write a handwritten note um and send it to them nice man i love it uh, so we, we uh, if you don't mind, we're going to jump into a little bit of a rapid fire here. Uh, make it easy on you. Uh, ask you some questions. Uh, if you want to go rapid, we'd love it. If not, if you want to talk a little bit more in depth, you can for sure. Um, I, I, I've noticed I'm the same way. I'm super close to my mom. So first one I'm going to ask you is uh, mom's home cooked meal that right now you miss the most. I love her oxtail. That's what she cooks for me every time I'm home. She orders it. It's a big special thing. We didn't have a lot of money back then, so it was really special when we got the oxtail because it's expensive. I'm trying love to go it. rapid here. Yeah, I love it. Tim Hortons or Duncan? Uh, Tim Hortons, easily. Ooh, oh, man. Really? Love it. I was, yeah, I, I was every, hoping you say something different. <laughs> uh, no, nah, that's the first thing I get when I land. It's the last thing I eat when I when I leave. So. Oh, <laughs> man. All right, let's go. Um, either favorite football stadium you, you played in last year or the one you're looking forward to playing in the most. Um, the one I'm looking forward to playing in the most is Heinz Field for sure because we played in Heinz Field, but it was empty. So, yeah, yes. I heard answer. stories. Yeah, my first season, I'm not curling. My dad's a huge Steeler fan, that's how I got into cheering for the Steelers. I'm taking my dad to Heinz Field as soon as I'm done playing in the winter. I'm getting my ass down there. I can't wait. Love it. You got to. Uh, your first purchase with your first NFL check. Um, my first notable purchase was uh, a car. I got a, I got a car. Um, I got a Tesla, 2020 Tesla. Ooh, Ooh taking care nice. of the viral. I like it, man. Good man. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I'm a big Jordan guy, so I'm gonna say, mm. um, favorite Jordan shoe you have, and uh, maybe one you don't that you wish you did. Uh, so my favorite Jordan in general is the Jordan ones. Yep, same. Um, I think I like the Trophy Rooms the best. Um, I have off white fives that I like. Um, and then I have the master four, um, golf shoe. Yeah. So those are probably my favorite shoe, but obviously they're golf shoes. And then the ones I wish I had the most is the Dior ones for sure. Man, you, you're not able all right. If he's not able to get his hands, I don't feel as bad <laughs> about me not having Yeah, I, unfortunately <laughs> I signed after they dropped. So if I was signed with them before they dropped, they would have sent them to me, but. Oh yeah. All right. I got yeah. one more. I got one more for you before we leave right here. We win in the AFC North this year. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if you guys saw what happened yesterday, but we are on good pace. Yeah. I like it. Good man. It, man. Well, hey, Chase, really appreciate you coming on, man. All the best to you through the rest of the season and keep it rolling there for uh, Steeler Nation and great job on the uh, uninterrupted dock. We look forward for that coming yeah. out. Yeah, man. Keep appreciate rolling. it a lot, guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it, Chase. All right. Okay. That was amazing. 
Now we get to get into our favorite one, Donation Station. But first off, let me read from our sponsor, DraftKings Read. Um, as we've talked about, it's been a great start to the NFL season. It's only getting better at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. DraftKings is putting on all new customers in the middle of the action. Download the DraftKings app now and use the co- uh, promo code Benny and Bo. With your first deposit, minimum of 5 bucks, you'll get a free shot at millions in total prizes. It's easy to play. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stack up against the competition. Ben and I will also be making lineups this week, so make sure you check out the socials for that. We'll be setting our lineup for the NFL for this upcoming week, week three of the NFL season. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Deposit or withdraw your cash whenever you want. DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. This week, giving all new customers a free shot at millions in total prizes. Get the app today and play with DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. And with that being said, we got to get in Donation Station. You and I have been waiting for this. We have. NFL side, let's get into it. Week one, I kind of killed it. I was amazing. Week two, I kind of gave it all back. How about my man Chase at the end of the interview saying the Steelers are going to win the AFC North? I do love it. Man. I love that. I do too. love it. Now that was that was our week. You know, it was uh, right after the week one. So obviously they they dropped the game this past week. There was a lot of upsets in week two. Oh yeah. I, I don't know about you. Uh, you know, pro star fake professional gamblers out there. Whoever <laughs> says they won a lot of money week two. I don't know a lot of people that won a lot of money in week two. Yeah, there were some upsets. Week two was tough. I would say um, the one that got me was the Saints Carolina. I thought the game would be closer. Um, to hold Alvin Kamara under, he had five rushing yards. So I think this. <laughs> I think the Saints are pretenders. But but here's why. Everyone was like, I like Jameis. I mean, I love Kamara. I, I like their team. I got Michael Thomas sitting on my bench in fantasy. I'm waiting. A lot for him of people to come do back, just right? waiting for him to come back. But he threw five touchdowns in the opening game with 150 yards. 170, yep. And two were to, uh, a tight end that played 11 snaps. You know, so... And everybody I, went and picked him up, spent a bunch of money on him in free agency. It wasn't like he was marching the field, slinging the rock like like Drew Brees and, you know, that. And, and I, there was a bunch of turnovers there. Their defense looked good. I, I'm, not, I'm not sold on them. And I actually had Carolina beating them this weekend. Did you really? I had that one. Well, well and here's thanks what, for the heads up, bud. And here's something. I, and here's something I'll say about Carolina. One, Christian McCaffrey, maybe the best player in the NFL. Like, he's he's ridiculous. But Sam Darnold, who everybody, not just me, everyone in the NFL, anyone that watched NFL, thought he was trash. I remember him getting just roasted on sports talk all year about the Jets and blah blah. Yeah, Sam Darnold. They all talk is the potential. Yeah, he looks pretty good. Yeah. You know who's trash? The New York Jets are trash. <laughs> God. What I mean, I will say, I, I will say, whenever last year watching them, did I think Sam Darnold was a problem? No, I thought the offense as a whole was a problem. They're in it, their their defense, I thought, was awesome. So, in my mind, I was like, if you add a couple of pieces and then now you add Zach Wilson, give him a year or two, I think this team's going to be serious. But you're watching again, and, and first of all, let's let's also remind everybody, okay, Zach Wilson, I thought, looked looked solid in week one, okay, week two, he played who. Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick's record against rookie quarterbacks yeah. is a million, bananas. A, a million to zero? Yeah, it's bananas. So um, did I think he'd throw three, four picks? No, but, you know, so did Joe Burrow. Sure. Yeah, he didn't look good. And three straight either. passes, yeah, right? Like, was... let's let's be honest. Like, Tua hasn't looked sharp either. Tua goes down early in the game. I want to talk about that. I want to talk. We, we brought up earlier on this show, I think it was like episode four or five, we talked yeah. about the rookie QBs. Yeah, okay. So, if, so from what you've seen so far of the rookie QBs, uh, what, what do you like? What are, what's the good, the bad, and the um, ugly so far? We haven't got to see Trey Lance. Okay, so yeah, so you haven't got to see a lot of Trey Lance. You got to see a little bit more of Justin Fields taking over for Andy Dalton with the late injury yeah. there. Um, he looked average. I, I, you know what? I thought he looked. I thought he looked like a guy that didn't get a lot of reps that week. Sure. Yeah. Um, maybe trying to make a couple more plays, and maybe he had to because they were up two touchdowns. Are you boys with Andy Dalton? Aren't you like buddies with him or something? I know Andy really well. Yeah, we went to we went to him. Him and my brother played on the same baseball team growing up. We went to the same high school. So um, I was the quarterback that took over for him when he left in high school. If you're the GM, and of the- we played each other for two straight years at SMU and TCU. Cool. Yep. So if you were the GM of the Bears, are you starting Andy Dalton? Well, I mean, he got hurt. Here, here's the thing: it's, it's, it's they call it stopgap, and I don't, I don't like using the term. Um, but when you draft a QB so high, you, the guy's going to be the starter. You're going to play another guy, and here's and here, just to explain to everybody kind of the situation how it works. Always, you draft a guy that high. Typically, what most people are going to do, they're going to save their bacon as a coach, right? Because if you put him in right away and he doesn't pan out, well, then you are incorrect for sure. drafting him that high. Um, but if you play the veteran, okay. Don't call as many pass plays. Don't call as many deep shots, but call a, game, a way to manage the game 
and don't lose the game on offense. And maybe that guy's not succeeding super well, but the offense is learning. Giving him a chance to win. Yeah, you're giving your, your, your team a chance to win without giving yourself a huge chance to lose by playing safe on offense. And then by game two or three, you bring in the rookie, and the guy starts doing these exciting things, throwing the ball deep. He's throwing the ball 40, 50 times a game. It all of a sudden looks like, man, they made the right decision. Now, once that guy has the chance to become a full starter, it, it almost like buys you an extra year, and you get to the second year of that rookie quarterback. So you're Joe Burrow, you're Tua, right? So that's kind of the... The, I like it. To me, the roadmap. So Unlike, I, I do see it with Trey Lance happening, but Garoppolo's playing well. The 49ers look good. Yeah, Jimmy G looks real good. Same thing with Fields. Zach, Trevor getting thrown in the fire right away, right? Well, Trevor's in the fire all right. Yeah, and you know what? Like Trevor, Here's the thing. Trevor's showing a, a lot of promise. He looks a lot like Joe Burrow. He's showing a lot of amazing things. He's throwing for 300 yards. Uh, he's throwing for three touchdowns, but he's also throwing for three picks. So it's it's the... But they're not game managing with him. No, they're and, letting it. And, and why not? Why let it fly? Oh, let, I want him to game manage. I got James Robinson on my fantasy team. Yeah, that's understandable. That's killing me. That's understandable. But uh, but yeah, man. I, I mean, uh, what I would say is Mac Jones looks like the real deal. Yeah, he does. And, he looks good. And Bell, they're protect, protecting him a little bit. But you know what? I do see him making some plays that I don't see other guys making. And, and when we talked about rookie quarterbacks, I did say that I thought Mac Jones was probably going to be in throw, the best position. Hey, throw that one in your for their little feather yeah, just in the a cap little. There. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did think you. Mac was going to be in the best best position to succeed and what about i wouldn't say surprises but the the who who looks the best to you right now like what are you seeing where you're like that that guy you know he's he's going he's got it going on it's like most talented right now i would i would still say it's either lawrence or fields um you know once fields plays a little bit more and, and has the the mindset of you know checking behind him when he's scrambling up in the pocket so he's not because he had two or three sacks that could have been fumbles he had one that was mm -hmm. um match you know, is in a better position to win eh yeah, I mean, he's on a better defensive team. Um, I think they do the right things on offense. They move the ball around a lot. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, look at Houston, right? Like, Houston has the Island of Misfit Toys going around right now. They're a actually, bunch of guys, that, and yeah, and they look good. And that rookie quarterback, Mills, they took in the fourth round, and he looked good when he came in for Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. Like, Man, Tyrod was slinging it. I was yeah, kind of happy so, to see that. So, I mean, if that. you put your quarterback in the right position, don't give him the opportunity to throw a lot of picks, and good things can happen for sure. So, here's one thing I want to talk about. I remember when uh, Matt Stafford was in Detroit, just getting beat down. I got like, a couple of buddies that are Lions fans. like, Stafford sucks. Stafford sucks. Team's brutal. Get him out of here. And when he left, I remember listening to a bunch of NFL experts, and they're like, you know what? We think he's going to be unbelievable in the Rams in that offense. Didn't uh, you, though? Like when I, I was drafting, it, I'm looking at Stafford way down hard, the list. Hard like, to oh, see. Yeah. I mean, hard to tell because of his years in Detroit. I mean, he'd sling it, they get down, he'd throw. Yeah, but he you, looks. You're looking at Sean McVay, you're looking at Cooper Cove, Robert Woods. Ooh, he looks good. I, I love yeah. it. I like Matt Stafford. He's a hard guy not to like and cheer for. Yeah. He's doing a great job. The Rams look for real. I think next week they actually play Tampa you know who Bay. Looks, who looks for real? Tom, and tell me it's no. Tom. Eastern Washington product, Cooper Cup, man. Yeah, that guy is. is uncoverable. I got him in fantasy. He's killing it for me. I love him. He has every trick in the book, man. Like he is, he is an amazing receiver. He's intelligent. He can run routes. He is fast. He is quick. He can stiff arm you. He can block. He can do everything. He's on. He's on punt return. Like he's on field goal block. Like he's out there doing everything for that team. I love him. I love him more because he's winning me a little cabbage he on the will. side. So right. What about uh, Kyler Murray and D Hop? They look pretty good. Oh, I mean, everybody on that team. Christian Kirk's looking amazing. Dude, I, what, you know what blows my mind? Bring in the veteran J.J. Watt. Yeah, when I watch Kyler, he's in the pocket. I see a DN running free at his face, and he's a yard away from him. And Kyler looks at him and can get away from him. And not not juke him. Like, can just turn around and sprint away from him faster than anybody I've seen. He looks in great. In such a long time. Like, yeah, I really like watching him. And he's then now exciting. he's keeping his eyes at the field, and he's making huge plays. He is more for a, seven, a Rondell Moore for a 77-yard touchdown. Um, you know, another one got called back earlier in the game. You know, if he finds D Hop a lot when he scrambles, you know, I mean, he they look they look for real. And and we can't not talk about our like Tom Brady. Like I mean, unreal. What I mean, what is he doing? It's, it's, he 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 looks like he's getting better. It's amazing. <laughs> I actually every week I watch him, I'm like, he looks like he's getting better. And Gronk. Gronk looks like he's like in his prime again. Just bullying everybody out there. You know, I'm I'm watching the game too, because I've got Gronk in a, in a couple of fantasy leagues and and he catches it. And Maddie's got Antonio Brown and she's like in and, and Tom throws a play action goes to the top to Antonio you know doesn't get it she's like dang it dang it like I, I need to do it again throw it to Antonio again I'm like babe they're not gonna do that they're gonna find Gronk well, and, and, and dude, guess they, what they find Gronk she's and she just goes why is he so wide open like isn't that Robert they, Gronkowski because they were because they were Robert Gronkowski <laughs> I don't know anyone that calls him that it's because they're covering Mike Evans Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown uh, it's it, they look it's like they're stupid. having fun like dude, the yeah. Bucks just are out there and they just look like they're playing like street ball 
Yeah. Like they're just whipping it around. I'm like, man, they look good. And Tom Brady looks amazing. You're going to head down to Florida and do, get on the TB12 uh, program the after TB12 the TB12 diet, right? whatever it takes, man. Holy, Holy shit. Yeah, he, he looks unreal. So with a little rundown there, we got to give some educated bets here. We sound like we pretend like we know yeah, what we're talking you know about. What? We, I, 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 I do. I'm the same as you. I did I did do really well in week one. So did I. Week two, I took a little bit of a hit. Uh, we're still in the green, but... Uh, I'm going to talk about a way to get to get back in the green for everybody. Not not chasing any bets here, okay? But uh, to make some smart, educated bets. Yeah, I might sure be I might be bet. chasing a little bit, but not a lot. <laughs> Just a little baby bit. <laughs> make sure you're hedging your bet in a way that uh, you can uh, succeed. Okay, well I'll start okay. before we go crazy NFL. Like for you golf fans out there, the Europe or uh, Ryder Cup is coming up. We did touch on it a little bit. I just think with all the drama for the United States, I actually think it's going to be a blowout. The drama. It's you, you have, Canadians like what do you call it? Drama. Whatever, man. So, it's, but here's the thing. I actually think it's going to be a blowout, and I'm not hedging either. I think it's going to be a blowout one way or the other. Yeah. I truly do. I think the Americans are either going to come in and say, I've had enough of this BS of us fighting, blah, blah, blah. Our rankings are way higher. We have way more studs. Let's dummy these guys. Right? That's what I think could happen. Yeah. But I'm not betting that. I'm betting that their egos are just too big. And the Europeans want to win too bad. Dude, when I play in the Continental Cup for curling, we normally have a much better team than them. We kind of go there and we have fun. We have some drinks. Like team camaraderie. We get to play with teams that always battle. Thinking you're just going to walk in and mop up? The last three years, they've absolutely... Broom up? Sh- yeah, broom up. They like shit that. kicked us. <laughs> they care. They try hard. They're tight. I'm taking Europe. They pay big plus 195 on the European team okay. to win. Like, And is it four in a row or three in a row? Like they've won a bunch in a row. I think... Three is what yeah. you told me. So yeah. I'm taking I'm taking Europe to beat the United States hey, in the right. DraftKings, can we get a prop bet on uh if the Americans will fight each other at one point? Like there's <laughs> got it's gotta happen, right? Like there's gotta be a I bet you there's probably a prop to wonder if Bryson and Brooks are gonna be put together in like a two ball. See, that's or, what I'm wondering. Like the captain's gotta go like, I gotta do this for ratings. And you know right? you know everybody in golf's like, hey, at PGA some point, Tour wants you it. have to put them together. Yeah. And here's what I can't wait is for Bryson to take out the book and measure a putt <laughs> and be like, okay, 37 feet minus uh, 12 inches yeah. and add, add six degree wind. Like, I just can't wait for it to happen and Brooks just look over it. It's like, actually going to be unbelievable TV to watch. I can't wait. If it happens, it'll be the most viewed golf of this year. I can't wait. What do you got for your first bet? Okay, so uh, the way I, I like to do this, and I told you, um, I like to go first touchdown score of a game. And here's how I do it. So I, I go through the games. I kind of like to look at, okay, where is a game that I can predict who is going to be the first team to score? So the other team is missing a quarterback. Um, they're not very productive on offense. Um, the other team might take the ball more uh, off the coin toss. So one that I'm looking at right now is against my Houston Texans, and we did talk about it with the Carolina Panthers. They lost Tyrod Taylor. I do think Mills looks decent there. Um, but Carolina has looked really good at 2-0 this year. I think they their defense has looked amazing uh to shut down alvin kamara so houston is a run first team so i do believe we're going to struggle there in the beginning of that game so what i do is i take let's say you know for argument's sake i'm going to bet a hundred dollars i'm going to bet a couple different guys who are the highest chance so they're the lowest odds to score that's going to make the money back so you're uh christian mccaffrey you're philip Lindsay, brandon cook so i do Lindsay and cooks on the on the odd chance that the texans do score first i take their two highest chances to score those two guys now i'm going to bet carolina in a way to make money for me is to go dj moore bet to where i can make 150 so i make a little bit more than my money i go sam darnold because he is one of those guys he's kind of like daniel jones when he gets down there he might just take off he panics a little bit they might just do a qb sneak with him as well um robbie anderson the second receiver highest guy to score on their team and then the other one for me that i love here that can really make you some money is our canadian born guy uh chupa hubbard yeah yeah because mccaffrey he's gonna get you down his workhorse um and i saw twice they put in chuba down there next to the goal line. Now he got stuffed both times, but hey, there's a chance he gets in, makes you 500 bucks. So that's the way I like to do it. Hedge your bet, 100 bucks on a couple guys so you can make your money back if the highest uh, odds guys score and then make a little bit of dough right there at the end if uh, one of the uh, lower odds guys scored. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. That's good. That's where you hit some big cash, too. And speaking of winning big cash, last weekend I tried to do like three two gamers. Keep it nice and easy. Just <laughs> nestle it in. Just trying in. to get all three of them. Feel good about yourself. I'm not doing that this week because it didn't pan out in week two. Yep. But but if you look at the matchups this week and you and you saw some of the upsets, you know, it looked like kind of they were there for the taking. After getting kind of a little bit of uh, a temperature of the league and seeing what's out there, I love the week two bets. I'm a big component of taking the favorites money line, parlaying them up for a decent payday. Yeah. And I'm going to give you guys a five-gamer here. 
So I'm giving you a five game parlay and it pays plus 400. So here's who I got. I got the Tennessee Titans to win. That comeback was insane over the Seahawks. Yeah, that was a great football Derek game. Henry Derrick up. Henry went a little crazy, didn't he? 162 tugs or three tugs. Do you have three? I think so. Well, he killed me in the fantasy because I played against them. Who do they play next week? I had it here. Uh, the Titans? Yeah. So the Titans play Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why I took him. Because that's another good one. That's the exact same thing I'm talking about the first touchdown when you know Wentz is out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. With Carson Wentz being out, like, man, man, did you see his ankle get bent back? Ooh, that was gross. Oh, yeah. So I got, I got Tennessee. Uh, I'm I'm parlaying him with the Broncos and Teddy Bridge, who have looked pretty good. Hey, okay. he's looking nice. I like that. I'm taking Kansas City because they'll never lose two games in a row ever. They're way too good. They're going to be <laughs> angry, and they're back at home. Their defense, by the way, looks pretty brutal. But I'm but I'm taking KC. I'm taking the Cardinals, and I'm taking the Patriots. The so, Patriots. So Patriots. The by the way, Cardinals over the Jags. Yeah, the Patriots over the Saints, pretenders. Yeah, as you said. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the only one that kind of get pays you a little bit decent. Is I'm taking the Patriots to beat uh, the New Orleans Saints in. It's in Foxborough though, so I like that. So I'm going to five gamer. Titans, Cardinals, Broncos, Patriots, Chiefs, plus four hundred. If you you're go. chasing, you're down a little bit early. I'm no. not saying I am. And you <laughs> We're just not going to encourage you to chase your best. That's not what you do, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you beat Donnie Donators. Sprinkle what you can afford. That's my five gamer for the week. I hope you hit it. I am definitely making that bet. Okay, so then my other favorite one, again, uh, is anytime touchdown score. So here's how I do this. I usually take three different four-way parlays, okay? So I'm going to bet 200 total dollars here. So the first one I'm going to go is one that's going to make me a decent amount of cash. I'm going to spend 100 bucks on this. I'm going to go four guys in each one of these. So I'm going to go with guys that have been scoring every single game. Okay, that's Christian McCaffrey, Lamar Jackson, Gronkowski, and some people call him Danny Dimes. I don't. I call him Dan Daniel Jones. Um, <laughs> because he doesn't throw dimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, he so runs gonna, pretty good. But he does, man. I mean, he had the 56-yarder called back. He would have had 10 rushes for 160 yards. Yeah, he runs And it. two touchdowns. That's insane to me. But uh, he actually runs QB draw down there a lot. I really like that as a possible touchdown score. Um, and typically, your quarterbacks add a bunch of odds there. So even if it's Lamar Jackson... Or Denny Dimes. They so you're parlaying to, all four of them? I parlay all four of them. So I do this a lot. So I, I'll parlay four guys that have been scoring touchdowns. Then I'll parlay four running backs that have a really good chance to score. So I'm going to pay 50 bucks on this one. That'll pay out 600. So that's Chris McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, um, Nick Chubb, and Tony Pollard. And the reason I'm going Tony Pollard is he had, a, he had 11 rushes for 100 yards last week. He is explosive. They gave uh, Zeke the goal line carry, but Pollard had a touchdown as well. And he had a touchdown in week one as well. So to me... Pollard is a guy that's going to continue to get more and more carries because he tends to ha make that offense a little bit more explosive. I like so it. I, I like to go four running backs. So you have a higher odds of hitting that one. And then I always love to do this. I go four QBs because it all pays out super crazy odds. So 50 bucks is actually going to pay you out 1300 Big hitter here. Uh, little risk, which is nice. Um, but I'm going, to part, I'm going to add on there. So, again, Lamar Jackson, Daniel Jones, Baker Mayfield, and the boy you've been talking about, Sam Darnold. Sometimes he panics a little bit. Gets into the end zone <laughs> and uh, it, it hits, hits for a big payday, man. It makes it, it makes a fun way to watch the game uh, because you're risking a little amount. The payout is huge and uh, you get to watch the game just hoping and praying for touchdowns. I like it, dog. Well, hey, that's a good uh, good NFL breakdown donation station. Like I said, we had a good week, week one. Maybe didn't kill it week two. We're hoping for a big comeback here week three. Hit us up and let's, uh, if, you, if you do win with our bets, Please send them to us here, and we'll get back to you on yes. the mailbag. Uh, hey, you know what, though? Kids did just start going back to school, and I have a funny story about that. So Ellie goes uh, Ellie goes back to school, right? I get to finally be there. It's bye week. And she walks in, and she tells me, you know, I don't want to go to school. I'm scared. I'm like, why, why are you scared? Because the stairs, they're so high. Like the, <laughs> our stairs in our house, right, is one set, but it kind of cuts in half. So she's got these stairs that go really high and then really high. She's like, I don't want to do it. I'm scared of the stairs. Um and then we had a mailbag come in, so I thought it was kind of funny. Everybody's going back to school. So the mailbag comes from uh, Jackson over in Medicine Hat. How were you in school? Oh, God. Uh, I, mean, I was a nice student. Like, I, was, I went to school. By nice student, you mean you were... Like, I, I wasn't like a class skipper. Okay, you were, but I mean, I was not. You were nice and kind to the teachers. Yeah, what you mean. I think like teachers liked me still, but I wasn't. I wasn't a scholar by any stretch of the imagination. You I know, can like, just imagine you I being the guy that like blurts out in class all the time. I literally, yeah, I got in trouble for talking lots. I mean, I have a podcast you're supposed to talk, but I think I just didn't try that much. Honestly, like I was such, 
Honestly, I was <laughs> such a psycho for sports in high school. All I played everything. All I wanted, all I could think about after school was getting like getting to practice, getting to lacrosse, getting to baseball, getting to football. I just like English and social science or like whatever the hell we were taking. I just didn't. That's how I know how good of a student you were. You didn't even know the names of the classes. Yeah, like I wasn't. No, I wasn't killing it in school. Were you good in school? Uh, I was uh, at times. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm a math guy, man. So anything that had to do with math, science, I was there. When we when I went to history class, it was news fest. It was time to put the book in my face and then fall asleep. Yeah, no, I yeah, I was uh, I was not the valedictorian by any stretch of the imagination. That's for sure. Unlike my beautiful wife Madison, who was uh, very good in school and still gives me crap for my handwriting and my grades in school. But let's that's- uh, make sure though that was one mailbag. Hit us up at uh, Benny and Bo uninterrupted.com or hit us up on our Instagrams at Bo Levi Mitchell at Benny Heaps. Thank you to Chase Claypool, Uninterrupted Canada, DraftKings, DraftKings, 40 Creek, episode 10 in the books. Check us out. YouTube, Spotify, Apple, man. Can't wait to see you for episode 11. We're out. You've been listening to the Benny and Bo Show, a presentation of Uninterrupted Canada.